Well, hi. I don't have a red nose, but hi. Um, I'm not feeling as open as I usually do. I realized when I was coming here that actually this is a really different audience than I've ever spoken to. Here's my problem. The only places I've been invited to speak before are to hostile audiences. <laughs> I'm lost. I might even get confused. I might even forget. So this is really unfamiliar to me. Um, but I'm very grateful. I'm so honored to be here with people that are actually curious. They actually want to listen. <clears throat> and you actually want to change games, change the games that are important to change. So I want to thank you, Tim and Paul. Uh, I want to thank all of you that are here and all of you that are watching for giving me this chance to talk with you. And I just hope you'll be a little bit patient because it's not as happy as some of the talks that you've heard so far. Maybe that's why we had <laughs> John Michael before me. Okay, so I'm here to tell you something that really, that really, really is important. I think it's going to be very important for you to know this. I think it will help us. It will help, help us to make change. Okay, so what am I going to talk with you about? I'm going to talk to you about the biggest data breach you've never heard of. The biggest data breach you've never heard of. Okay, everybody here is very familiar with security breaches, right? Everything gets hacked. Technology systems are not safe. They're not secure. Everything gets stolen. Credit cards, uh, IDs, um, social security numbers, um, PIN numbers, you name it. The list goes on and on. Just recently, we had the greatest, the biggest data breach ever reported, the target data breach. Remember that? Right before Christmas. Hackers got 40 million credit cards. Later, they got 70 million phone records and emails. Took them. It was a disaster for Target. They lost trust, and they lost money. Just, I think, about a week ago, the CEO resigned. That was a huge data breach. It was front page news. What I'm going to talk to you about is bigger than that, and it's not on any page. It's not something I think you've heard of yet. I want to talk to you about the greatest <laughs> privacy data breach that ever was. What's different about a privacy data breach than a security breach? Security breaches we all know about, they're outsiders. They're hackers. They get into something they shouldn't. The data breach I'm going to talk to you about is a privacy breach. We've got to start with what does privacy mean? Privacy means simply your right to control personal information. It's very simple. It's not secrecy. It's your right to control, and you decide how much you want others to know about your personal information. That's what privacy is. The privacy data breaches that I'm going to talk to you about happen to everyone. They affect everyone in this room. They happen millions of times a day, and they're legal. They're legal. They're normal, standard business practice in the healthcare system. Yeah, the healthcare system. Our most sensitive data, data about our minds and our bodies and our feelings. Have you heard of it? Has anybody here heard of that? I didn't think so. It just hasn't been reported. But before I tell you how this happens, <clears throat> I want to tell you a little bit first about why I've been looking at this for 35 years and why privacy is so important to me. And it's really because of my profession. I'm a mental health professional. I'm an MD. I'm a psychiatrist. I'm a Freudian analyst. We listen very carefully. Who would tell us anything if it was going to be on the internet, right? Privacy is basic. It's really important to healing and trust. It certainly is in our work. But if you think about it, it's not just psychiatrists and shrinks and mental health professionals that you want to keep your information private. There are lots of sensitive things that you wouldn't want anyone other than your doctor to know about, doctors and other specialties. So privacy is really critical for healing and it's really critical for trust. And today, 
there are nearly one million data suppliers that buy, sell, and trade our health data million, millions of times a day. Millions of times a day. How do I know that? I want to tell you about a document that paints the most complete picture that I've found in all the years that I've been looking at this. I found it last January. This company it calls itself the leading, the world's leading information services and technology company in the world. The world's leading information company, services and technology. What do they do? They buy, sell, and trade our sensitive health information, listen to this, with 100,000 health data suppliers. 100,000? Who cover 780, 100,000 live daily data feeds. Have you ever heard of that? Did you ever imagine that? That's nearly a million companies using, selling, trading our health information. What for? What are they doing with it? How did this happen? Let me tell you first about me. I learned pr about privacy from my patients. I hung out my shingle, first week. I'm really old, 1970s. <laughs> People came to me and they said, if I pay you cash, will you keep my records private? Yeah. I've been hearing that for 35 years. Why do they ask me that? Because they've already had sensitive health information leak out of the doctor's offices. Where? To employers, to insurers. And now, in the electronic age, who knows where? I mean, there's almost a million people with our health data. Who knows who they all are? and what they're doing with it. Um, of course, in analysis, uh, privacy is really, really obvious. You know, um, if my patients thought that anything that they told me wasn't private, they wouldn't be able to open up. If they couldn't open up to me, I couldn't help them. It's as simple as that. Privacy enables us to help people. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm talking with you about this. That's why I think this is so important. Okay, so how did this happen? Story's kind of interesting. How did everyone get fooled? Why wasn't this reported? The problem really is even our doctors don't know that HIPAA doesn't protect privacy. They don't know that, just ask them. Ask any doctor or ask a pharmacist. Ask them, do you buy or sell my health data? Is that happening? And they'll say, of course not. That's not happening. HIPAA is a privacy rule. It protects your data. Except that it doesn't. It doesn't. Here's where the problems with protection of privacy began. Back in the Clinton administration, some of you might not remember this, but there was something called the Clinton Health Care Initiative long before Obamacare. Okay. One part of that was they wanted to use the nation's data, every single visit that everybody made with any doctor. They wanted to put it in a database. They wanted to do that because they thought with the data that costs could be reduced and they thought that technology could really make for greater uh, research gains, breakthrough research, and a better healthcare system. Also good intentions. The problem is they forgot that privacy is fundamental to trust and to healing. It's, it's the Hippocratic Oath. It's the Hippocratic Oath. That's the unintended consequence. Fast forward, 2001, President Bush implemented the HIPAA privacy rule, and it did protect privacy. But in 2002, his administration stripped consent out. We no longer had privacy in the privacy rule. Does anybody remember hearing about this in 2002? No. It's been 12 years. It still is not a story but this is the greatest data breach that there is. And it's happening to us constantly and every day. So you might say, Deborah, where's the data go? And I'll tell you, it's a great question, but I don't know. We don't have a chain of custody for our health data. We don't know, like with criminal evidence, who touched it, when they touched it, what it was, and where it went. We don't know anything about that. 
We don't know who these 880,000 data suppliers are. We can't track the data. There's no data map that tells us all the places it goes. By the way, the foundation I started, Patient Privacy Rights, is a nonprofit. Our mission is to restore your control over data. We're working with Harvard to try to build a data map, but guess what? We've only found a few dozen places. That's why that document in January blew me away. Another question, how is it used? Well, how do we know? Who are these people? Who are these companies? We really don't know. <laughs> I guess your next question is, do I know anything about this? Yeah, I know a couple of things, okay? We know a few things. <clears throat> we do know that almost any company or person that touches health data sells it. Why? It's the most valuable information about you in the digital age. It's very, very valuable. So, we know, for example, that physicians and their EHRs sell the data. The EHRs, virtually all of them sell data. Hospitals sell data. Pharmacies sell our prescription records every night. Insurance companies sell claims data. Labs sell test data, test results. Uh, and 33 states sell records of our inpatient and outpatient visits. Texas is one of them. All 50 states sell newborn baby blood spots. That's genetic information. Surprised? That's where we are. <sighs> Sorry. Why is this happening? The government has promised us that opening data to commercial use would provide innovation, and guess what? The same things the Clinton wanted. Lower costs and better care. Our data's been out there for 12 years. What have you seen? Have you seen that? Have you seen lower costs, better care? What are we getting for all of this? What have we given up our privacy for? What is this data being used for? Well, there are some things we do know it's used for. It's used to create more expensive treatments, more expensive drugs. It's used to develop mobile apps that measure things about you and collect even more valuable health information about you. It's used to actually target people for trials of certain medicine or for clinical trials. Did you know you're targeted? You are. So we know a few things, and they're not very pretty. So it looks like the main way that these 880,000, nearly a million companies use our data is for profits. You know, but that's the law. That's their duty to their shareholders. They have to make profits. But really, <laughs> with our most sensitive personal data, is that really necessary? So our country so far has spent $29 billion for health technology, and this is what we've got, a system that serves the government's interest in our information and private corporations. Let me just tell you a little bit more about what it means not to have control of, over your information. Probably the easiest way to talk about it is to talk about the difference between paper record systems, if you're really old like me and know what they are, and electronic health record systems. Okay, paper record systems existed in a couple of places, and you knew where they were, and they never released your data without you knowing. In paper systems, only one person can read the record at a time. And if there's a breach of a paper record, if the paper goes to the wrong place, you can retrieve it or it can be destroyed. Listen to how different it is with electronic health record systems. Our data is in millions of databases unknown to us, unknown to us and unavailable to us. Millions of people and millions of machines can read it simultaneously. If there's a breach, and we've already talked about this breach, it's impossible to fix. How can you delete or retrieve data from millions of locations you don't even know what they are or what they have? It's just not possible. It's just not possible. What are people doing about this? Believe it or not, people are doing things about it, and it's not good. 40 to 50 million people a year act to try to keep their health information private. 37.5 million hide information. That means they lie, they omit, they don't take a test, they see a different doctor to try to keep the information separate. 
Millions more avoid treatment or delay treatment for serious conditions like cancer, cancer, mental illness, and sexually transmitted diseases. These people are taking their health and their lives and they're putting them at risk just to keep this information private. And that always was our right. What else does it do? When they keep information private and they avoid treatment, it causes bad data. So the research we get is going to be really not accurate if one in eight people are lying and omitting something. And worse than that, these systems, the technology is causing bad health outcomes. It's really bad for you to delay treatment for the serious illnesses that we talked about. Bad outcomes. Why on earth would we tolerate an electronic health record system that causes bad outcomes? Okay. It's actually not a technology problem. This is really a policy problem. There was one line in the amended HIPAA privacy rule that was passed in 2002 that eliminated privacy. Just so you know what it is. It says, the consent provisions are replaced with regulatory permission for covered entities to use and disclose your health data for treatment, for payment, and for healthcare operations. People, that's everything. That's everything. That means doctors, hospitals, insurers, and data clearing houses. There's millions of covered entities. Control what happens to your data, not you. That's what's happening today. So, now you know. Um, that's the greatest data privacy breach. And you might think that I'm opposed to technology. But hear me. There's great technology that can fix all this. It can put us in control so we get the benefits and, and can prevent the harms. But we're not using it. We're just not using it. So, all this is going on. It's legal. It's behind our backs, and it's happening millions of times a day. <clears throat> there are some other parts to it you need to know about. <clears throat> These corporations are making tens or hundreds of billions of dollars a year, and all that money doesn't go back into helping us become healthy either. Again, who's benefiting? Is it you? Is it me? I haven't seen any benefits. Can you even get copies of your electronic health records? I can't. <laughs> Okay, every other country that uses health, health technology actually has lower costs and better outcomes than we do. What's wrong with this picture? That's the EU. They don't have almost a million companies commercializing their health data. Okay, this is the time where I'm supposed to tell you the three things you can do, you know, the three actions you can take, make everything better. Guess what? This is just too big. This is just too scary. I can't tell you three things you can do. You can do them, and it's not going to have any effect. You might as well step in front of a freight train. <laughs> There's only bad options, right? Lie, hide data, or don't get treatment. That's terrible options. So what can we do? Here's what we learned in medical school. See one, do one, teach one. I've got an idea. How about you've seen one, you tweet one, and you expose one. <laughs> Will you help pay this forward? Will you tweet? I want my health data to be mine. I want to keep it private. I want to choose who can see and use it. It's going to take a movement to stop this. It's going to take a movement to fix this. So now I've told you some really important information. Now it's up to you. We can do this. We can change the code. We can change this technology game, but we can't do it anyway but together. Thank you. I really appreciate this time. <laughs> <laughs>